Specific releases are no mystery. There are some muscles that are difficult to access. You have to really understand your anatomy in order to identify either the belly of these muscles or in some instances, the tendinous attachments. The first release that we're going to demonstrate is subscapularis. There are various ways to do this, but positioning up under the scapula is what is involved with inhibitory pressure applied to the belly of the muscle. Combining movement also facilitates the release. Next, we're going to move down to latissimus dorsi, using a compressive force into the belly of this muscle. We are going to then move the muscle in order to allow the muscle to relax. Inhibition is actually a better word than release for these methods. We are inhibiting the motor tone of the muscle in such a way that it will assume a more appropriate resting length. This also is targeting the latissimus dorsi using a compressive force with a squeezing action, introducing a bit of a bend, and then lengthening to help the muscle to relax. Pectoralis minor is next. Knowing the precise action of the muscles is important. Being demonstrated is the action of pectoralis minor. Inhibitory pressure is applied through the pectoralis major into the belly of pectoralis minor. Then the client moves the shoulder to activate that muscle. The next release being demonstrated is pectoralis major. We're going to grasp the belly of the muscle as it goes into the arm applying an inhibitory pressure, and then move the, the muscle through its contraction and lengthening phase. The client can also move the muscle. Next demonstrated is sternocleidomastoid. Using a pinch and lift inhibitory pressure to protect the vessels underneath will allow us to inhibit this muscle, reducing motor tone. Make sure not to poke or pinch. Use your whole hand as much as possible to lift the muscle. In some instances, both sides can be done at the same time. Once the inhibitory pressure is applied, then have the client move through the muscle actions. The next muscle we're going to address is rectus abdominis. This is one of the muscles that's best addressed from the attachments because it's a long muscle. First, we're going to inhibit at the attachments on the thorax, having the client begin to do a little bit of a sit-up contracts the muscle. This is actually an application of muscle energy technique. Then we're going to lift and stretch and knead at the belly of the muscle. The next muscle addressed is the diaphragm muscle. Utilizing the side of your hand or your fingertips, you can press down and just under the ribs. This would be an attachment inhibition.
Both sides can be done at the same time and the client can be instructed to breathe. Side lying position is most effective for accessing the scalene muscles. By having the client move in various positions, we can either activate the muscle or inhibit it. By changing slightly the angle of your arm, you can access anterior, medial, or posterior aspects of the muscle. Positioning the head, as demonstrated, is going to allow us to apply inhibitory pressure to the suboccipital muscles. A broad-based compression is most easily tolerated. Activate the muscles by having the client roll their head slightly as well as roll their eyes in a circle. An alternate position is to use the fingers in a braced finger position to access the muscles. This application can feel more intense to the client. It's appropriate to choose which method the patient tolerates the best. Utilizing the sideline position and placing the arm above the head, we can apply a broad-based compressive force to anterior serratus. Instruct the client to contract the muscle, and then combine inhibitory pressure with contraction and then relaxation of the muscle. If necessary, Various aspects of anterior serratus can be addressed. Be aware, however, that this can be extremely uncomfortable and clients may not be able to endure this. Quadratus lumborum is going to be addressed next. The preferred position is sideline, utilizing the forearm. Place the arm over the head, straighten out the legs to separate the ribs from the pelvis. Sometimes you have to use the side of your hand if they're very narrow in this area. Compression needs to be applied down to the edge of the muscle. The muscle can be activated by having the client raise and lower the leg. Next, we're addressing the paraspinal muscles. This is a very deliberate action between the spinous process and the transverse process, moving back and forth in a frictioning method. It is often appropriate to kneel down while the client is in a sideline position to access these muscles. Also in the sideline position, you are able to work with the rhomboid attachments by applying pressure along the edge of the scapula. Again, kneeling allows you to access different angles of the muscle attachment area. Being demonstrated now in the sideline position, is how to access the attachments of the hamstring. Having the client move the leg back and forth activates these muscles. This is the area where the inhibitory pressure is applied. Inhibitory pressure to the entire hamstring muscle is extremely affected utilizing the therapist's leg as demonstrated. Then movement is used by having the client move their leg back and forth. The inhibitory pressure applied to the hamstrings 
can be facilitated by adding various muscle energy methods. This is an example of inhibitory pressure at the attachments of the hamstrings. With the patient prone, we're able to access the deep lateral hip rotators. One of the most effective ways to do this is to apply a broad base compression into the area, then move the muscles back and forth as demonstrated. In the prone position, it is possible to access the rhomboids and other tissues underneath the scapula. As demonstrated, you find the edge of the scapula and then with the client passive, you're going to lift the scapula up and over the fingers. Compression to the sacroiliac joint area is applied at the sacrum and then the client lifts their legs alternately back and forth. Because the movement of the sacroiliac joint is very important in terms of walking, it is sometimes appropriate to superimpose the walking action while compression is applied. In addition, inhibitory pressure can be applied to the muscles surrounding the sacroiliac joint. Even though this joint does not have direct muscle attachment, Muscles in this area can refer pain into the jointed area. Both braced fingers and forearm can be used. The client is using active range of motion to help with the release. Being demonstrated now is various range of motion methods for the pelvis. Rocking the pelvis back and forth also helps the sacroiliac joint function more appropriately. In this position, we are able to access the psoas. There are many different ways to apply compressive force to inhibit the psoas. Regardless of the position used, we need to apply compressive force sufficiently deep enough to access the belly of the muscle. 